Hello, Axel Wilkinson here for HitFilm.com and in this video we are going to take a look at the transform controls. Now this set of controls varies a little bit depending on whether your layer is a 2D layer or a 3D layer and we'll look at both um, but to start with we will look at the 2D transform controls. The first control listed is opacity which is fairly straightforward as you bring the opacity down the layer becomes more transparent until it disappears entirely at 0%. So that's a pretty easy one. After that is anchor point which we will get back to in a minute. The anchor point is marked by this little blue circle. Uh, by default it's in the center of the layer but we'll get back to using the anchor point a little bit later on. Position just adjusts the position of the image in the viewer. Now for 2D layers you can basically move them up and down or side to side. If you picture it basically like you have a piece of paper laying on top of a desk. And so while laying on the top of the desk you can slide it in two different directions. And then with 2D layers you can also just grab them anywhere you want and move them around freely. But the positioning widget and the viewer can be handy for constraining that movement to one specific direction. And then of course you can also adjust those values in the controls panel. Now when you're adjusting the position, let me reset that by right clicking, choose reset. The default is zero and that marks the exact center of the viewer area. So as you move the image to the right or toward the top of the frame, you'll get positive numbers and as you move it down or to the left, the readout will be negative. So if I move this layer upward, you can see we get positive numbers telling us how many pixels we've moved from center and then as I come back down past the center, the readout goes into negative numbers. Our next control is scale, which adjusts the size of the layer. And in this case, the resolution of our clip is actually much higher than the resolution of our project. And so we can't see the entire clip in the viewer. And so we can adjust the scale to make our clip match the size of the project we're working in. Now that the corners of the layer are visible in the viewer, we can also use these handles to adjust the scale. So if you hold shift and click and drag on those, then the shift will act as a constraint and make sure that the aspect ratio of the clip stays the same as you adjust the scale. If you don't want to constrain it, then you cannot hold shift and drag and then you can freely adjust the height and the width of the clip independently of one another. I'm going to undo that, control Z. And we can also use these handles to rotate the layer if we hold Alt while we click and drag. Now another thing to keep in mind with the scale is that you can go negative with it as well. And when you do, you can see that now our layer is flipped both vertically and horizontally. So I'm going to go back up to positive values. And you can also unlink these two values. You see this little chain icon. By default, these are linked together so that if you adjust one, then the other one adjusts in an equal value as well, so that the aspect ratio of the clip stays the same. But you can unlink them by clicking on that icon. And then, you can see here I'm adjusting only the height and the width stays the same. And when I go negative, the clip is now flipped vertically, but not horizontally. So you can adjust those individually by unlinking the scale attributes if you need to. I'm going to reset that again. You can also use the scale to simulate distance from the camera. For example, if I bring this scale, this one down a bit, and then I'm going to make a duplicate of that layer. And I'll move that one back, scale it down a bit further. And then I'll do one more back here, make it really tiny. And there you can see that these appear to be getting farther and farther from the camera because they're getting smaller and smaller. In point of fact, this tiny layer, if we drag it down, is actually in front of the big layer because the order of 2D layers is controlled by how they're stacked on the timeline. The highest layer up is going to be in front of the layers below it. But you can use scale to simulate distance from the camera if necessary 
Uh, as we get into 3D layers, you'll see that that isn't always required. Using 3D, you can actually move them farther from the camera, but that can be a handy trick in some cases. I'm going to hide these duplicate layers, and then we'll go back to this one. Rotation just spins the layer. If you think of it again as a piece of paper sitting on a desk, and then imagine we stuck a pin through the paper into the desk at the position of our anchor point there, then as we increase the rotation, the paper is going to spin around that pin. You can also move the rotation into negative values if you want to spin it counterclockwise. And as you spin beyond 360 degrees, this counter will keep track of how many complete rotations you've made. So here we've gone all the way around once, and then another 42 degrees. You can also use this handle on the viewer widget. You'll notice as you hover over it, that blue circle appears, and then you can rotate the layer around that circle directly on the viewer. All right, now back to the anchor point. Remember we talked about that being like a pin stuck through the paper? So if you move the position of that pin, which we can do, here we'll move that up into the top corner, and you can see that the anchor point doesn't actually move. It's still in the center of the viewer, but the layer moves around it. And that's because these position controls mark the location of the anchor point. And so the anchor point is always going to be at the position you assign here. And then if you adjust these controls, that's just going to move where within the layer the anchor point falls. So here we've moved it up into this corner. And now if we rotate the layer, you can see that it's just like if we stuck the pin through the image in that spot into the desk. Now as we spin it, it spins around that location. And you can actually move it beyond the edges of the layer as well. Go a little further. And now when we rotate the layer, the entire layer is going to orbit around the position of the anchor point. Now let's take a look at the transform controls for a 3D layer. We'll start with a standard 2D video layer like we did before. And we can convert this to a 3D layer by clicking on this icon. And that gives us a menu where we can choose to convert this to a 3D plane. This window pops up. It's basically just telling us that we need to have a camera in order to work with 3D layer. So we click Yes. And a camera is added to our scene. The viewer goes back to the default. So I'm going to use this mouse wheel to zoom out until I can see the entire viewer. And as you can see, it doesn't look much different other than these two red and green lines passing through the middle of the viewer. But when we look at the transform controls now for this layer, we can see that there are some additional controls now that it's in 3D. The opacity still works exactly the same. As you turn that down, your layer is going to go more and more transparent until it disappears. The anchor point, you can see we now have three sets of numbers instead of just two. And that's because in addition to being able to move it left and right and up and down, we can now move it forward and backward as well. And again, we're going to move on and we'll come back to the anchor point later. Position likewise has three sets of numbers, X, which is left and right, Y, which is up and down, and Z, which is forward and back. And these can be adjusted either here using these numbers in the controls panel or using the handles of the widget in the viewer panel. And for the z-axis, which moves the layer toward or away from the camera, this blue dot is actually the end of the arrow, which is pointing right toward us. But you can see as we hover over that, it selects, and then we can click and drag to move that layer away from or toward the camera. And from this particular view, it looks pretty much exactly the same as adjusting the scale. But if we change to a perspective view, then as we adjust that, you can see that it's actually moving through space as we make that adjustment. So we can move it farther away from the camera. It's actually the same size. It just looks smaller because it's farther away. Now, we do still have scale controls. And again, there's three of those. And so we can adjust the scale of that layer still. But when we do, the position of the layer remains constant in relation to the world grid, and only the scale is changed. And then if we want to adjust the position, we have to use separate controls. Now, one of the key ways that position in 3D space differs from position in 2D space is that here, if I make a duplicate of this layer again, and I'll move the duplicate off to the side a bit, and then 
as we adjust this layer, you can see here it's in front of this layer. And then as we move it, as it passes the position of that layer, it now is behind it. Now this layer is in front. So even though the order of these two layers doesn't change on the timeline, because they're in 3D space, we can put whatever layer we want in the front just by adjusting its 3D position. When adjusting the position of multiple layers, the additional views available once you're in 3D space can be very handy. For example, if we switch to the left view, and I'm using the mouse wheel to zoom out, then we can see here's our two layers, and here's our camera, so we can easily position where those layers fall in relation to one another, and how much space is between them. And that can be good for setting things up. And then, of course, you can always switch back to the actual camera mode to see what the scene is going to look like when you render. Okay, I'm going to hide this layer. We'll go back to this middle layer and look at the orientation and rotation controls. Now, at first glance, these appear to do the same thing. If I adjust the Z orientation, you can see there the layer is spinning, just like rotation did with the 2D. And if I adjust the Z rotation, hmm, exact same thing, except... With rotation, I can go into negative numbers and spin it counterclockwise. Now, there are a couple of other differences. With orientation, you can go from 0 to 360, and that's it. You can't go past. You can't do more than one rotation, and you can't rotate it into negative values. Whereas with the rotation, you can. You can spin it negative, and you can spin it past 360 if you want and do multiple rotations. So orientation is chiefly for getting the position of the layer. If you need it to be facing a particular direction, orientation is good for that. Also, orientation can be adjusted from on the canvas. This handle on the viewer widget will only control the orientation values. So we have this handle, and then these two little white lines just past the other arrows are the other two orientation handles. And depending on the angle, they can be rather tricky to see. And so again, adjusting, if I switch to top view, now you can very easily see the green handle, whereas in active camera view, it's just this tiny little line because it's facing up. So using the other views can sometimes be important for getting the orientation adjusted exactly the way you need it to be. Also, if we activate keyframing for orientation, then advance the playhead a bit and zero the orientation settings out. Now as we scroll, it's, you can see, even though at this keyframe we've made almost a complete rotation, we're at 359 degrees. But as it animates, we don't see it making that much of a turn because orientation is always going to take the shortest route from point A to point B. And so rather than spinning 359.8 degrees to get back to zero, it's going to take the shorter path and move 0 0.2 degrees instead. So let's reset that. And then we'll look at the rotation settings, which give us complete control over how the layer rotates. If we go to frame one and we activate keyframing for rotation, and then here we set it to, well, let's go to 359 degrees again. Now, as we play that, you can see that it's making that complete turn because it's going from zero to a positive setting of 359. So in general, if you just need to adjust the position and the direction that your layer is facing, then orientation works great for that. And if you need to animate the layer actually rotating in specific degrees, then the three rotation controls give you absolute control over how the layer is going to rotate. Okay, so now back to the anchor point. It's basically the same as with the 2D layers, with the exception that it now moves forward and backward as well. And so, if I go back to a perspective view, and I'm going to use the orbit tool to adjust our perspective on the scene just a bit, then I'll go back to the selection tool, and I'm going to offset the Z value for the anchor point so that our anchor point is well out in front of the layer. If I look at the top view, there's the layer, and here's the anchor point way out there. So we'll go back to our perspective view, and if we rotate that layer now, I'll adjust the rotation Y. Rather than just spinning in place, it's actually traveling in a circle because of the distance between the layer and the anchor point. So I think that pretty well covers the transform controls in HitFilm. If you had any questions that we didn't answer, 
uh, please let us know via our website at hitfilm.com and keep your eyes on our YouTube channel for more tutorials in the near future. Thanks for watching.